Hello again, YouTube Chrissy here at a little glam, a lot of mom. Thanks for tuning in. In today's video, I'm sharing Latino picture books for children. It's a big stack. I have over 10 books and I'm also sharing a good stack of books in the YA genre for my teens. Enough of our Latino American history has been whitewashed, ignored, used as a political pawn, and confined to a month. I've been led to redefine Latino American history and Hispanic Heritage Month, and my children will know the stories of our heritage, so that is what has inspired this video. Maria had a little llama of the classic rhyme, Mary had a little lamb, with gorgeous illustrations inspired by Peru and the Peruvian Andes culture. La Princesa and the Pea, another bilingual book and retelling of a classic children's story inspired by the culture of Peru. I love the cultural visuals of all the colors and patterns in the fabrics and that the characters are whimsical in authentic fairy tale fashion. Another children's classic, but this one is from Cuba, Matrina the Beautiful Cockroach, a Cuban folktale. The beautiful Matrina Josefina Catalina Cucaracha doesn't know coffee beans about love and marriage. Luckily, she has her Cuban family to help. A silly and unique folktale as it's about a cockroach. We love stories about animal protagonists and we love learning traditional folktales of different countries and cultures. Last year we learned a lot about Cuban history and culture. We visited some landmarks and museums in Key West so we were happy to have this folktale on our shelf. Abuela's Weave this reads a story about the importance of family pride and personal endurance introduces children to the culture of guatemala through the eyes of little esperanza who works with her abuela on weavings to sell at the market again beautiful cultural sightings in this book uh, the colors and the patterns of course in the weaving but also in their clothing and i feel like it depicts uh, a day in the life or the life of uh, a traditional Mayan tribe uh, with the villages and the houses and the buses and the markets. Along the Tapajós this picture book, first published in Brazil, offers kids a unique look into the lives of children who live along Brazil's beautiful Tapajós River. So this is about a brother and sister who live in a small community along the Tapajós River in Brazil. Here, the homes are on stilts and everyone travels around by boat, even to school. When the rainy season comes, they must leave their village and relocate to higher ground for a while. But after moving this year, the siblings realize they've left behind something important, their pet tortoise, Titi. Unlike turtles, tortoises can't swim, and so the siblings are worried and they sneak back at night on a journey along the river to rescue him. Sonia's Rainforest. In this picture book, we get to explore the wonders of rainforest with Sonia, an Asheninka girl whose outdoors adventures are one day interrupted by a mysterious and puzzling discovery. This book gently touches on the topic of deforestation. It's also important for my family to learn about the people, society, and culture of indigenous heritage in North, South, and Central America and learn why it's important to support these indigenous communities. A New Kind of Wild, and it reads, When Ren moves to the city, he feels lost without his wild. How will he ever feel at home in a place with no green and no magic? Ren discovers nothing makes you feel more at home quite like a friend. This storybook is inspired by the stories of the author's father who told her about moving from Puerto Rico to New York as a child. I was looking for a book to gently touch on the topic of immigration and the cultural challenges and differences that immigrants face.
Dreamers, another picture book about immigration. A mother and son immigrate to the US. They don't speak English, they're afraid and disoriented, and then find the public library as a haven. This is a celebration of making your home with the things you always carry, your resilience, your dreams, your hopes, and history. It's the story of finding your way in a new place, of navigating an unfamiliar world and finding the best parts of it. A story similar to those of my parents and grandparents and I love that we can make those connections through their stories and a book like this. This book also has a beautiful lyrical text, rich in symbolism and fine detailed illustrations. I have two holiday books. The first is The Legend of the Poinsettia. In Mexico, the poinsettia is called Flor de la Nochebuena, Flower of the Holy Night. At Christmas time, the flower blooms and flourishes, the quite exquisite red stars lighting up the countryside. This Mexican legend tells how the poinsettia came to be through a little girl's unselfish gift to the Christ child. Through this story, we're learning of a traditional legend or again, folktale from a country which we love that, but I'm also loving again, the just cultural illustrations with the rich colors of Mexico. And we also get a glimpse of what Christmas might look like uh, or how it is celebrated in Mexican culture. Twas Nochebuena. It's Christmas Eve and you're invited to a Nochebuena celebration. Follow a family as they prepare to host a night filled with laughter, love, and Latino tradition. I love this book because it actually reflects on our own mix of American heritage and Latino heritage in our household and how we uh, over the years have merged both and we celebrate both Noche Buena and Christmas morning. The remaining stack are picture book biographies. Latinitas celebrating 40 big dreamers. It reads, discover how 40 influential Latinas became the women we celebrate today. From Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor to singer Selena Quintanilla to NASA's first virtual reality engineer, Evelyn Miralles. This is a book for aspiring artists, scientists, activists, and more. These women followed their dreams and just might encourage you to follow yours. This is a collection of short biographies from all over Latin America, across the US. Representation matters and I'm super excited to have this collection in our home library. Biblio Burro, a true story from Colombia about a man, his burros, donkeys, and his books bring joy to children in remote Colombian villages. Another true story from my beautiful Colombia, Digging for Words, the life of Jose Alberto Gutierrez and garbage collector in Bogota, who started a library with a single discarded book found on his route. And on Saturdays, kids like little Jose run to the steps of paradise to discover a world filled with books and wonder. Planting Stories, The Life of Librarian and Storyteller, Pura Belpre. This is an inspiring picture book biography on storyteller, puppeteer, and New York City's first Puerto Rican librarian who championed bilingual literature. Latina representation, advocacy books, storytelling, a library setting. Gosh, what's not to love about that? The color palette and illustrations in this book are just stunning. I love the depictions of San Juan in the Roaring Twenties, the dresses, hats, and the modesty of women and little girls in this era. And of course, the library illustrations, the tall building windows, shelves, books, undoubtedly one of my favorite books out of this stack. Harvesting Hope, the story of Cesar Chavez, a civil rights leader that is left out of American history and social studies. When Cesar Chavez led a 340 mile peaceful protest march through California, he ignited a cause and improved the lives of thousands of migrant farm workers. 
Dancing Hands, how Teresa Carreño played the piano for President Lincoln. This is a story about a little girl who had to flee the U.S. with her family because of the Venezuelan Revolution. She felt lonely in this unfamiliar place, but when she felt sad, she had the piano to cheer her up. She could play anything, grew to be famous, and was invited to play at the White House. Yet, with the country torn apart by war, could Teresa's music bring comfort to those who needed it most? This book has a great message of courage and gently prompts discussions through hard topics like war, immigration, sadness, and a hard time in American history. Let's move on to the uh, YA young adult genre. Leaving Glory Town, One Boy's Struggle Under Castro. It reads in this absorbing memoir, by turns both humorous and heartbreaking, Eduardo Calcines recounts his boyhood and chronicles the conditions that led him to wish above all else to leave behind his beloved extended family and his home for a chance for a better future. When he was 10, his family applied for an exit visa to immigrate to America, and he was ridiculed by his schoolmates and his teachers for being a traitor to his country. Even worse, his father was sent to an agricultural reform camp to do hard labor as punishment for wanting to leave Cuba, all while Eduardo is hoping that their visa is granted before he turned 15, the age at which he would be drafted into the army. My teams and I both devoured this in just a few days. If you could only pick one out of this stack of young adult genre, go with this one. The House of Broken Angels by Luis Alberto Urrea. In his final days, beloved and patriarch Miguel Angel de la Cruz, affectionately called a Big Angel, has summoned his entire clan for one last legend legendary birthday party. But as the party approaches, his mother, nearly 100 years old, dies, transforming the weekend into a farewell doubleheader. Among the guests is Big Angel's half-brother, known as Little Angel, who must reckon with the truth that although he shares the father with his siblings, he has not shared a life. Immigration and current events, a bittersweet family portrait, and being transported to a Mexican family house in San Diego, California, and La Paz, Mexico. Furia by Jamil Saed Mendez. It reads, in Rosario, Argentina, Camila Hassan lives a double life. At home, she's a careful daughter living with her mother's narrow expectations in her rising soccer star brother's shadow and under the abusive rule of a short-tempered father. On the field, she's La Furia, a powerhouse skill and talent. She gets an athletic scholarship to a North American university, but the path ahead isn't easy. Her parents don't know about her passion. They wouldn't allow a girl to play football. I'm Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter by Erica Sanchez. Perfect Mexican daughters do not go away to college and they do not move out of their parents' house after high school. Perfect Mexican daughters never abandon their family, but Julia is not your perfect Mexican daughter. That was Olga's role, then a tragic accident in the busiest street in Chicago leaves Olga dead and Julia left behind to reassemble the shattered pieces of her family. There are so many great dialogues and conversations that this book will bring up with my teens, like generational cultural expectations that run so deep in Latino families, being the first to go to college, cultural identity, immigration, fear of de deportation, family sacrifice, and heavier topics like mental health, suicide, and sexual abuse. There is adult content in this book, so I would say that this book is for an older or more mature, almost adult teen. We Are Not From Here by Jenny Torres Sanchez, a novel of desperation, escape, and survival across the U.S.-Mexico border inspired by current events. This is about three teens who cross from Guatemala through Mexico. They follow the route of La Bestia, the perilous train system that might deliver them to a better life if they are lucky enough to survive the journey. As the daughter and grandchildren of immigrants, my teens and I have heard the heart-wrenching stories of traveling immigrants, including those of our parents and grandparents. These stories are eye-opening and will change your perspective and we just want to know as many of them as we can and grieve with them and heal and hope with them. Warning that there is strong language for suitable situations in my opinion, violence and minor sexual content. This is definitely for a mature or young adult, not a young teenager. The House on Mango Street, a coming of age 
story of a young Latina girl growing up in Chicago inventing for herself who and what she'll become. This is written in a series of vignettes. Uh, my teen girl appreciates uh, books with an artistic approach and lyrical text, so I uh, purchased it for her and I thought she would enjoy reading in between the lines. And I thought I'd share the resources that I'm using with my two groups of students, my teens and my younger elementary children, uh, to learn and teach more about uh, Hispanic American history. This is our America, a Hispanic history of the United States by Felipe Fernandez Armesto. The United States is still typically conceived of as an offshoot of England with our history unfolding east to west, beginning with the first English settlers in Jamestown. This view, however, overlooks the significance of America's Hispanic past. With the profile of the United States increasingly Hispanic, the importance of recovering the Hispanic dimension to our national story has never been greater. The United States clearly has a Hispanic present and future, and here it is. It's Hispanic past presented with characteristic insights and wit by one of our greatest historians. And for my younger elementary students, I have a Kids Guide to Latino History features more than 50 hands-on activities, games, and crafts that explore the diversity of Latino culture and teach children about the people, experiences, and events that have shaped Hispanic American history. Latinos have transformed American culture and kids will be inspired by Latino authors, artists, athletes, activists, and others who have made significant contributions to American history. This book covers a lot of Latin America instead of just a few countries. It begins with the history of each Latin American country featured, uh, beginning with the settlers, uh, and then it moves on to its uh, connection to Im and immigration to the United States. It covers a little bit of social studies or cultural studies as it uh, touches on a festival or some sort of uh, cultural celebration for each country, followed by a craft. So each feature is short, uh, which is great for younger children, but I find that it is still very informative. All right, so that wraps up today's video. I hope that you were able to find at least one book that inspires you out of today's book stacks. As always, everything will be linked in the description box down below. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Thanks so much for your love.